Okay, here we're going to look at how your body goes about regulating blood calcium levels. So let's start with homeostasis. What does your body want to maintain? Well, normal calcium levels are 10 milligrams per deciliter. It's normal calcium levels. So your body's trying to keep uh, at a very consistent rate despite a lot of changes. So how does your body regulate this? Well, first off, if we have an increase in our calcium level, say plus 10 milligrams per deciliter, if we're looking at higher than that, the thyroid is going to release calcitonin, which is going to cause calcium to be reabsorption in the kidneys to decrease, which is going to limit our osteoclast activity, and this ultimately is going to lead to the calcium levels in blood to decrease back down to 10. So here we're seeing it above 10, we're seeing these chaining of events that occur, reducing the level to then get it back around 10. Now, if the opposite occurs, we have a decrease in calcium level. Uh, the parathyroid glands release PTH, which is a hormone. This will cause osteoclasts to release calcium from bone. Calcium is reabsorbed from the urine by the kidneys. And calcium absorption in small intestine increases via, via vitamin D synthesis. These three events will cause calcium levels in the blood to increase, hopefully bringing that level back up to the 10 milligrams per deciliter that your body needs. This is a general overview. We're going to look at this now in a little bit more detail. So this is kind of putting it all together. You can see we're trying to maintain homeostasis. If there's a way to increase it, we want to, if calcium levels increase, we want to lower them. And if they decrease, we want to raise them to help maintain homeostasis. Now looking at this in a little bit more detail, we have blood calcium concentration dropping. So we kind of have this kind of situation that's occurring here. We have this decrease in calcium level that's initially occurring. Now, looking into some more detail, the body still releases uh, PTH, which is that parathyroid gland hormone, and that's being released into the bloodstream. That's causing an effect on the bone. It inhibits the osteoblast, stimulates the osteoclast, bone is broken down, releasing calcium ions into the bloodstream. This same hormone, though, in addition to the blood, also is affecting the kidneys. It's stimulating the kidneys to recover waste calcium doesn't want to excrete that, it wants to take that back into the bloodstream. Uh, this is causing that uh, movement of these ions to help raise these levels up because we have this initial drop that your body is able to sense. In addition to the bone and the kidneys, uh, the intestines will also be affected. This PTH hormone will also stimulate the intestines to absorb calcium from digesting food. This is important because your body is doing whatever it can to help bring these levels up. Now, calcium levels will begin to increase. This may cause calcitonin to be released. High concentrations of calcium stimulate these cells to release calcitonin. Calcitonin will put calcium into bones. So in this case, we had low levels. We did these three different events. We've now increased our blood calcium levels almost too high. Now we need to reabsorb that and store that calcium in the sense of calcitonin. That then will ultimately release um, to the calcitonin in the bone, which will stimulate the osteoblast, inhibit the osteoclast, and calcium is ultimately removed from the blood and used to build bone. And then that can cause the calcium levels to drop, which will then cause the sequence of events to occur. So I just want you to understand that it's very complex and how the body does regulate, in this case, just calcium. But there is always a way to, in this case, raise our calcium levels and decrease our calcium levels to help maintain that very delicate balance we call homeostasis.